stop using big tech voice assistants is probably what I'm going to title this video, but I'm honestly not here to tell anybody what to do. I'm just going to try to like give the information and then I'll probably save my opinion for the end. But I do want to say that I did for a brief time work at Amazon and actually did work at Amazon Alexa. And believe it or not, I actually worked in the privacy team. So I know a little bit about uh, Amazon Alexa. And all I can really say, I don't know what I'm allowed to say and what I'm not allowed to say, but working there definitely made me not want to use Alexa. And that's not just because of Amazon, like the culture or whatnot. It's directly about the product and specifically like the privacy of the product. But it looks like somebody got an email. Dear Amazon Echo customer, we are reaching out to let you know that the Alexa feature do not send voice recordings that you enabled in your supported Echo devices will no longer be available beginning March 28th, 2025. This feature allowed compatible Echo devices to process the audio of Alexa requests locally on device. As we continue to expand Alexa's capabilities with generative AI features that rely on the processing power of Amazon Secure Cloud, we have decided to no longer support this feature. Now, uh, the way they worded this, there's a couple of different ways that like I kind of interpret it. The first one, I'm sure many of you would agree, is that they're kind of just saying that, hey, we want your data. We want to farm your data. We want to store it. We want to use it. And I think that's obvious. Obviously, like they want as much data as possible. But I think to play devil's advocate for a bit, another way to interpret it, and I don't know like the entire details, but the alternative thing would be that to process an individual request, because this email seems to be specifically about Echo devices, but not all Alexa devices are Echo devices. So why would they send an email only about a specific advice and say that since we need more to actually process a request, it needs to be sent to Amazon's backend and it can't happen on device. So it's not necessarily true that they're going to be storing every single request, but let's get at least a little bit more context before we jump to any conclusions. There's not a lot of news on this just yet. I think the best that I could find was this Verge article. So just like skimming through this for like the main points, it seems that, and part of it seems to be the fact that Amazon is going to be launching a generative AI powered Alexa. The original Amazon Alexa was just very uh, sort of obsolete if you could imagine that like they invested billions of dollars into that and it was just completely obsoleted by LLMs which is you know another reason that Alexa is just not the most like well-run uh, part of Amazon and it looks like we get the full message here so just picking up after like the first paragraph that we already read the second one is if you do not take action your Alexa device will automatically be updated so starting March 28th your voice recordings will be sent and processed in the cloud and they will be deleted after Alexa processes your request. Okay, so to get the full context, and this is kind of why you have to be careful. As much as I, you know, I'm not a fan of Alexa, even I have to kind of step back for a little bit because it, it seems like that Reddit post was kind of like a part of it was to rage bait, and that's kind of what social media is about. I mean, most people don't really care about the truth, they just want to get as many impressions or upvotes or whatever as possible. I try not to do that, even though on YouTube, it's kind of the same way. Every time I make a video talking about some random crap, it does well. And all I have to do is just be sensational about it. But I try not to do that. But uh, and that's this is a reason why you shouldn't, because the context does matter. Whether this matters to you or not, like this second paragraph, you shouldn't just not include it when you're making a screenshot post. But it looks like any previous saved voice recordings will also be deleted if your voice recording setting is updated to don't save recordings. Voice ID will not work and you will not be able to create voice IDs, blah, blah, blah. So it does sound like it's not as bad as it initially seemed. And it makes sense because I believe that the do not send feature that has to be manually enabled. You have to specifically select that as a user, you have to go into the settings and do that. And so I would guess that a very small percentage of people did that. So why would Amazon care so much about just collecting like 1% extra data? I don't think they care that much about that. So this does seem like it's mostly related to the generative AI side, but here's my humble opinion. Does this really make your life better? 
I mean, in some cases, obviously, yes, when it comes to accessibility, you can understand how a voice assistant would be better than, you know, typing something or searching a different way. But here's kind of my like 60 second opinion. I believe almost everything just boils down to habits anyway. When it comes to assessing the value of something or assessing whether something makes your life better or makes you happier or something like that, most of the time, things really don't make a difference. Think about this for a second. Why did it take Netflix so long to grow? In most ways, it's obvious that it's a better product than like legacy television. You don't have to sit through commercials. You can choose what you want to watch. Part of the reason, the biggest reason is just habits. It takes a long time for people to switch from doing one thing to another. It's a kind of slow transition. And that's what I think is going to be the same thing when it comes to AI stuff. Because uh, when you're looking at cloud computing, for example, same kind of thing. It takes a long time for people's habits to slowly change, even when you have sort of something that is definitively better in certain ways, at least. It's a lot quicker to build applications, generally speaking, using the cloud. But there are very significant side effects, and this is the thing that nobody talks about. Big tech never talks about it. There's side effects to cloud computing, obviously, that we know of. That's like vendor lock-in and software engineers, rightfully so, always kind of call that thing out. Whenever they see it, they say, hey, th this has the potential to be abused. But people don't really talk about it outside of software engineering as much. Let's talk about social media. Do smartphones and social media in general actually make our life better? In some ways, obviously, yes, we have a computer in our pocket. We can talk to anybody anywhere in the world whenever we want. It's very, very powerful to have a phone and to have like AI assistance and all of that baked into the phone. But what about the side effects? Over the last 10, 20 years, People have started to catch on. There's very, very significant side effects to this. And it's in many ways not actually making you happier. It's not that different than a drug. So what big tech is trying to do, I'm going over my 60 second time limit, but in my opinion, what big tech is trying to do is just slowly change people's habits, get you hooked on that drug that they're trying to sell. Why do you need to walk into a room and flip a light switch? Why don't you just clap your hands and Alexa will turn on the lights for you? I mean, sure, that's kind of cool at first. AI stuff is pretty cool. It's cool to be able to respond to a text message using your voice as you're driving. And sometimes that can even be necessary but I humbly don't believe it's actually making people's lives that much better. The concept of buying things online with Amazon retail. Yes, in some ways that does improve people's quality of life. You can order things that you couldn't. You have access to products at lower prices than you did not have before. But for the most part, I think 90% of the things that people buy on Amazon, it's not actually stuff that they need. It's kind of just a, a binge purchasing and doing things out of habit. They get addicted and then their habits change. And then instead of doing things this way, now they do it th the other way. And it's hard to go back to doing things the other way. And that's pretty much the whole thesis of big tech. Everybody's addicted to their smartphones. You got to buy an Apple phone, an Android phone. You got to use Facebook or Instagram or some social media. You got to use YouTube. You got to use Google Maps. Got to search. Got to buy things on Amazon. Got to use the cloud. Got to use all the voice assistants. Got to have a smart home so that, you know, every single thing is electronic. Got to have a smart fridge too. Got to be addicted to everything. Everything has to be connected. And I don't think anybody's life is that much better. And you can kind of tell that I, I believe what I'm saying, whether you agree with me or not, you can tell, like, if you look at my room here, uh, I'll try to like make it uh, easier to see, but I'm not doing a good job of that. But you can see that I believe what I'm saying. I believe that having a simple, basic life is really all most people need. I mean, for thousands and millions of years, that's what people did. And things were not perfect. As time has passed, technology has solved a lot of problems, but it's created a lot that people just seem to ignore. And, you know, that's why I try not to, you know, stay caught up with all the random cutting edge things, because I don't think that most of them actually matter that much at all.